theory of the periodic table. And for this very class, we're working on the, the periodic train, which is uh, we have the covalent radii, we have uh, the ionic radius, the electropositivity, ionization energy, electron activity, and electronegativity. So all these they are called. The periodic chain. So let's pick the one after the other. What is covalent radius or covalent radii? Now, covalent radii is the distance between the nuclei of two atoms that are covalently bonded together. So let's assume that this is a carbon atom and this is a carbon atom. The distance between the nucleus of this carbon atom to this place is what we call the covalent. Radii. I repeat, the distance between this, the nucleus of this carbon atom to the nucleus of this carbon atom is called the covalent radii. We already believe that an atom it has a nucleus that a part of it is, uh, is called a proton, while the one that is neutral is called the neutron. And these two here is called the nucleus. And we have an electron that revolves around the nucleus. So the distance between the nucleus of an atom to another nucleus of an atom that is covalently bonded together is referred to as what? Covalent radii. Take note of that. Then what about ionic radii? Let's assume that the electronic configuration of sodium is, we already believe, is 1s to 2s to 2p6, 3s1, or 2,8,1. That's to say the first shape has two electrons. The second she has eight electrons. Then the third she has one electron. So the distance from the nucleus of sodium to the valence electron from the nucleus of sodium or for the nucleus of an atom to the valence electron is referred to as the ionic radius. I repeat, the distance from the nucleus of an atom to the valence electron, please. This is what we call the valence electron. The valence shape is also known as the outermost shape. Why the shape before the valence shape is called the penultimate shape? Why the shape after the penultimate shape is called the anti penultimate shape? So we are not talking about the penultimate here now, we are not talking about the antipenultimate, we are talking about the valence shape. So the distance from the nucleus to the outermost shape is referred to as ionic radius. Now, majorly the element in the periodic table we have uh, uh, metals and we have non-metals. We already agree that metals they have the tendency to give out electron, which is to donate electron. Why non metal refers to the ability to gain electron. So when metals give out electron or when they donate electron, they are referred to as electropositivity. And the element itself is called electropositive element and referred to those elements as cation. For example, we have sodium here. So when sodium gives out electron, you have sodium plus plus electron. So that's to say this sodium has given out one electron becoming a positively charged atom. So we refer to this as electropositivity. Why the energy evolved for sodium to give out the electron, to give out this one electron, this most loosely bonded electron, or the least strongly bonded electron? Let me draw the electronic configuration of sodium again. One, two. Here is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And here is one. So this one here is the most loosely bonded or the least strongly bonded electron. What I mean by that is that it is very, very difficult for you to remove this eight electron. It is very, very difficult for you to remove these two electrons. So if you must remove any electron, the electron must go out of the atomous shape. So the energy that is involved for you to remove this one electron that is here is called the ionization energy. Assuming we have three electrons, so if we remove one electron, so there will not be Na. Let's assume that this element is S and it's a gas. It will be S plus plus electron. 
That is, you have removed one electron. Then, the energy involved for you to remove another electron from the one you have already removed, it will now be S plus 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 electron. If you remove one electron from this one, it will now be S plus plus to give us what? S plus 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 what? One electron. For example, aluminium has the tendency to give out three electrons. So, aluminium, if aluminium should give out the three electrons, we have Al3 plus plus what? Three electrons. Like magnesium now has the tendency to give out two electrons. So, you have magnesium two plus plus two electrons. Or, let's say sodium has the tendency to give out one electron. So, you have sodium plus plus what? One electron. This one here is called the first ionization energy. This is the second ionization energy. And this is the third ionization what? energy. And this process, like what I said, the energy involved for you to remove uh, an electron, the most fully bonded electron, on the least strongly bonded electron from, I repeat, loosely bonded or least most loosely or least strongly bonded. So the energy involved for you to remove that, it is called ionization energy. It can be an ion, it can be a molecule, it can be an atom, anyone. But the energy that is involved is called what? Ionization energy. And this process itself, it is called, we can also refer this to as ionization potential. And the process itself is endothermic. So please take note, ionization energy is an endothermic process. That's to say, it absorbs energy from the surrounding. Then the next one we have here is electron affinity. Now, the energy that is given out after an anion has given out, uh, sorry, an accepted electron is what we refer to as the electron affinity. For example, if you have uh, oxygen here, plus two electron to give us let me just put oxygen to give us O2 minus plus energy. Now, the energy that is giving us from this reaction, the energy that is given off from this reaction is what refers to as electron affinity. And electron affinity is an exothermic process. Like what I say, ionization energy or ionization uh, uh, potential is endo, but for electron affinity is an exothermic process. That is to say, energy is given off from the reaction. Why for electron affinity, sorry, for ionization potential, energy is absorbed from the surrounding. Then the last one I have here is electronegativity. We already know that elements on the right hand side of the periodic table, they are non-metal. And non-metal are usually electronegative. That is to say, they are set electron from an electropositive element. So for oxygen, here yeah, is going to accept two electrons uh, fluorine is going to accept uh, one electron fluorine is going to accept one electron so any element at all that has the tendency to accept electron making it negatively charged or an anion is referred to as electronegative element but in most cases you don't see questions regarding you defining covalent radii, ionic radii, electropositivity, electron uh, electron affinity, electron negativity, or ionization energy or potential. Question might not come from that angle. The question might go, they might ask you a question in this format. Which of the following is an atomic radii? So please take note. You can call this covalent radii or what? Atomic radii. So covalent radii is also referred to as atomic radii. And ionization energy is also referred to as ionization potential, which is an exothermic and thermic process. Why electron affinity is an exothermic process. So we have what we call the periodic chain. The periodic chain can be horizontal, horizontal, or vertical. So for vertical, you already know that we are talking about group. Why for horizontal, we are talking about period. So what you should take note of is the group is usually referred to as down. The group for the periodic chain, why for the period is referred to as across the period. So, how do we remember 
covalent radii, ionic radii, electropositivity, and energy, energy without cramming diesel work. So there's a mnemonic I do give. Covalent ion, I repeat, okay, let me write it out. Covalent ion exports international electron. The exception of three up, comma, three up, comma, three down, three left, and three right. So if you can remember this name we say, you have been able to recall everything that we explained in level six regarding uh, the periodic chain. I repeat, covalent ion is for international electric intersection of three up, three down, three left, three right. So, what is covalent? Covalent stands stand for covalent radii. I, ionic radii. E, look at it, EP, electropositivity. I, ionization energy. This E, electronegativity. Why the last E here stands for? Electron affinity. So we have C covalent radii, ionic radii, and ionic radius rather, electropositivity, ionization energy, electronegativity, and electron what affinity. So we have three up here. Three up. Three. Three of them are facing up. Then we have three down. Then we have three right. Then we have three legs. <laughs> so if you can get something like this, I believe that you have been able to solve ninety percent of your problem. So if something is going up, take note. If something is going up, it simply means it is increasing. If something is coming down, it simply means it is decreasing. If something is going to the right, it simply means it is increasing. And if something is going to the left, it simply means it is what? decreasing so we can easily say this one is increasing 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 decreasing decreasing and this one is decreasing if this one is increasing 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 decreasing decreasing and this very one here is decreasing we already know that this one said they are horizontal and this one said they are vertical and vertical stands for vertical stands for group why horizontal stands for what? For period. So if I want to write this out, I'll say covalent radii increases across, sorry, increases down the group. Here should be group and here should be period. Please take note of that. So covalent radii increases down the group and decreases across the period. Ionic radii here is increases down the group and increases across the period. Electropositivity it increases down the group and decreases and increases across the period. Ionization energy decreases down the group and decreases across the period. Electronegativity decreases down the group and decreases across the period. Electron affinity decreases down the group and also decreases what? Across the period. So let's take the game. Covalent trade that it increases down the group and increases across the period. Ionic trade that it increases then increases across the period. Electropositivity increases down the group and increases across the period. Ionization energy it decreases down the group and decreases across the period. Then electronegativity decreases here and also decreases here. Then electron affinity decreases down the group and as well decreases across the period. So what if they give you uh, a particular number of elements and they tell you that which of them is more electropositive or which of them is more electronegative? Please take note. The most electropositive element in the periodic table is francium, which is a group 1 element. So group 1 elements are usually electropositive. So the most electropositive elements in the periodic table they are the group 1 elements. And the most electronegative elements in the periodic table they are the group 7 elements. We don't constant group 8 in this periodic chain because group 8 elements they are usually uh, 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 stable or not reactive in most cases. So for the periodic chain, 
And then the time, uh, group one or group two tend to be the one that have the highest covalent radii, the highest ionic radius, the highest electropositive. Uh, uh, then in the time, group seven, they tend to have the highest ionization energy, they tend to have the highest electronegativity, and they tend to have the highest electron affinity. So please, group one element, they always win the first three, while group seven element, they always win the last three. Like what I said earlier, group eight elements are usually not considered in this range. In this very, very range, they are not considered because we already believe that they are very, very stable. They are stable and they don't undergo normal chemical reaction. That's why it is very, very difficult for you to see argon, for you to see xenon, for you to see krypton occurring in a, a normal chemical reaction. Though, is it true that they react? Yes, but for this your level, the answer is no, they don't react. But probably when you advance, you realize that. There are some reactions that noble gases, which is the stable element, they do undergo. So I have a question for you. Among all the periodic trends, which is covalent radii, ionic radii, electropositivity, ionization energy, electron affinity, and electronegativity, which of them is endothermic and which of them is exothermic? What I mean by the thermic is which of them, because some are everything again, which of the following has a positive beta H and which of the following has a negative beta H. So for a positive beta H is exothermic, while for a negative beta H, for a positive beta H is endo, while for a negative beta H is exothermic. So this is the end of the video. If you are not a subscriber, please do want to subscribe and I will wait to see your comments of this on the comment section. Thanks for watching. See you in the next episode.